George, George of the jungle, strong as he can be. Okay, so every now and then I get a phone call from somebody that just says, you know what, George, I have to buy a house this year because if I don't, I'm going to get killed in taxes. Well, let's talk about whether or not that's true. Thanks for coming into the creditjungle.com today. This is George Anderson, and thanks for watching. Uh, my typical response is, well, who told you that? Well, my real estate agent told me that if I don't buy a house this year, I'm going to get killed with taxes, or that I need to buy a house because it's going to help me with my taxes. I just got to be honest with you, I, I hesitated a little bit about this because for years and years and years uh, that I've been in the business, that has been the standard pitch uh, that, that a lot of real estate agents use to entice somebody to buy a home because it will help you with your taxes. Well, let's examine that, okay? I'm just sticking my neck out here, but uh, at sometimes you, know, you just got to go ahead and lay the facts out for people to see. So. There are two ways when you when you file a tax return. Let's just we're just going to take somebody that is a wage earner that is not self-employed. Okay, uh, you can either itemize your deductions or you can take your standard deduction. Your standard deduction means that you get it, whether or not you qualify for it or not. So when you do an itemized deduction, for most people those those itemized deductions are going to be just a very small category of of um, deductions that you can take. The biggest one typically is mortgage interest. Yeah, so mortgage interest. I think property taxes for some states, state income tax up to a certain amount can be itemized. And then the other thing that would be on there would be charitable contributions. So Boy Scouts to your church, whatever you're doing on there. So let's take a look at uh, just a, a typical example then. So your standard deduction, okay, for the year 2020 for a single person's twelve thousand four hundred, had a household eighteen thousand six fifty, and then married filing jointly or separately. I'm not sure how you exactly how you do this. This is why they have CPAs, but it's double the single one, which is twenty four thousand eight hundred. So, let's take somebody that says, "Well, I, you know what? I just have to, or I'm going to get killed." Okay. Let's just take a typical number here, and I'm not going to do the amortized amount. I'm just going to do a straight interest amount, which is actually higher than what it would be because if your loan is amortizing, your interest, your principal chips down on it a little bit. But if somebody has a $400,000 loan at 3% interest, okay, just using a simple interest calculation, how much is their mortgage interest deduction going to be at the end of the year? Okay, we know that some rates are less than three on, on a lot of mortgages now, and some might be over, but we're using this as an average. Well, that means you're going to have $12,000 of mortgage interest. Okay, that's pretty typical. Well, what if you had a $600,000 loan at 3%? Well, you're only $18,000. Well, if you're married, okay, let's just say that, okay, so I've got my $12,000, there's your mortgage interest. Let's say you paid $3,000 in state income tax. Uh, let's say that you had maybe another uh, $3,000 maybe in charitable contributions, and maybe your property taxes were maybe another $2,000, okay? We add all those categories up, and what do you have? You got $20,000 of what would be itemized deductions, but if you're married, okay, um, which one's going to give you less taxable income? Well, yeah. Your standard deduction, you, you just get that because you're alive and you're married. Okay, so your standard deduction here is going to beat your itemized deduction. So, yeah, go ahead and take it. Okay, now let me ask you another question here. This is a little bit trickier one, and this is just based on I, I'm meeting with my CPA actually this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And I've had the same account that I've worked with since 1994, and he does a great job. Anybody want a referral, um, give me a call, and I'd be happy to refer you. But um, what if you're head of household? Your itemized gives you 20000 Your standard deduction gives you $18,650. Um, my CPA would say take the standard deduction instead, well, wait a minute, I'd be losing $1,350. I'd have to pay taxes on another $1,350. Why would a CPA advise somebody to do that? Well, what do you think has a higher, pro a higher probability of being audited? Somebody who takes their standard deduction or somebody who itemizes? 
Okay? There's just some things in life that are just not worth messing with, and that's why I go to a, a CPA to prepare my taxes and advise me and everything else. You know, at, at the end of the day, okay, if that means I got to end up spending maybe another couple hundred bucks, three hundred dollars maybe on my taxes to basically just know that I, I have zero chance of ever being audited, that might be the option. So anyway, something to consider because if you don't have all these other deductions in here and if your mortgage interest is based on current rates, chances are you are not paying anything close to $20,000 in mortgage interest on here. So the standard deduction is very, very generous and it's been in place. That was doubled basically a few years back, I think in 2018 with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Uh, that was passed in 2018 and I think for 2021 I think it's inflation adjusted again and it may increase who knows we get a new administration might have new tax code and everything else but this is for the 2020 tax year so just something to consider and then going forward you know if this doesn't have much of a change on it okay what is the benefit is there a tax benefit just to go out and buy a house if you're really not ready to buy a house maybe not Anyway, thanks for coming into the creditjungle.com today. This is George Anderson, and I'd like to help you with your situation. So give me a call. Talk to you soon. Have a great day.